Hi, my name is Shaked and welcome to another Godot Shader tutorial. Today I want to talk about the effect I've just added to my game Taito, the fiery ring effect. Now Taito is a game about gliding, so at the end of Taito's tutorial I want to have some kind of a practice session where the player needs to glide through rings and to get all of the rings. So every time he glides through a ring, you can see there is the shader effect and also particle effect. So, I thought that I can actually make a tutorial explaining exactly how to do them, which is surprisingly simple if you're already familiar with uh, shader effects and particle effects. It's actually a pretty simple one. So let's get to it. Before we begin, I just want to say that this is going to be a quick tutorial where we try to get results as fast as possible. So I'm not going to be explaining every step of the way. If you're new to shaders or you just want to understand shaders better, I do recommend my two previous videos where I do a deep dive into the world of shaders and explain every single step of the way. So let's get going. So the first thing I did was actually just draw a white circle. And as you can see, it's not even a good circle, but it will do. So I'm taking the circle and I'm just scaling it on the Y axis. So we'll get sort of a ring. And then I'll add a shader material to it. So let's add a shader material and a new shader. Let's call it fire ring. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create two noise textures that I can sample. And I'll explain why in a little bit. So let's just write uniform and we need sampler 2D. Let's call it noise one. I'm going to make it repeat enable. This is really important. Now let's do the exact same thing for noise two. And now let's make the actual texture. So we're going to our sprite, our shader material, our shader parameters. And here I'm using noise texture 2D for both of these. Now I create a new noise and I want the noises to be a little bit different. So one will be a simplex smooth and the other one, let's make it Perlin noise. Also, I want to tick the seamless box in both of these. Now I want to sample the noise texture based on the sprite's UV. So first of all, let's define a float and we'll call it a noise one value. It will be a sampling of a texture. The texture is going to be noise one. We're going to sample at the UV coordinates and that's gonna be a vector four. So I'm taking only the X value or the red value because it's black and white. So it will all be the same. And if we want a visual representation of this sample, let's go to color and let's set it to vector four of noise one value. And yeah, that's how it looks like. Let's even get rid of the alpha. So it won't be transparent. Yeah, that's the noise texture. Let's do the exact same thing with noise two. We have noise two value and it's going to be sampling of noise two. And it's gonna look like that. What I wanna do now is to create some movement, but I want the two textures to move in opposite directions. Let me demonstrate. So first of all, let's take noise one and let's add the time parameter to it to create motion. And if it's too fast, I can always multiply it by let's say 0.1 and I can play with this parameter until it looks good. Now I'll do the same thing with noise two, but here I'll subtract the time parameter and let's multiply it by, I don't know, 0.2 to create something a little bit more interesting. So it will go to the opposite direction. What I wanna do now is to mix the two textures together. I'll create a float called mixed noise. And how can I mix the two textures together? It's really simple, you just multiply them together. Because every texture here or every value is a value between zero and one, if you will multiply them together, they will still be a value between zero and one. Let me demonstrate. If I'll take the mixed noise, and I'll make it a noise one value multiplied by noise two value. And then let's look how it looks like on my pad. So now we can see the movement in both direction, but it is still just a value between zero and one. It's either black or white or something in between. All that's left to do is to create the actual effect. So let's get to it. First of all, I want to define a new vector two and we'll call it offset. And let's say right now it's equal to zero and zero. And now I'll assign the color, a sampling of the texture, which is its own texture at the UV location that practically does nothing. Now I'll add the offset vector 
and it will still do nothing because it's zero and zero. But you can see that if I'll change the values, it will offset the texture accordingly. Now here is the fun part. I'm going to take the offset vector and multiply it by the mixed noise. So when the mixed noise is zero, there will be no offset. And when the mixed noise is one, it will be the offset vector. Let's see how it looks like. And boom, that's what we're going for. Now let's adjust some parameters. For example, here in the offset vector, I can decide how much distortion I want on the X axis and how much distortion I want on the Y axis. So for example, let's say we want very little distortion on the X axis and we want fairly like decent amount of distortion on the Y axis. Yeah, maybe a little bit more than that. And here I can change the time parameter. So if I want the um, distortion to go a little bit faster, I can do that as well. Another thing that bothers me is the fact that when we remove the offset or we'll change the offset amount, it will change the location of the ring. It will go a little bit up or a little bit down. And I don't like that. And the reason it happens is because we're offsetting the texture in only one direction. The offset amount is between zero and one. And I want it to be to both directions, between minus one and one. So we need to take the noise textures that are currently between zero and one and transform them to be between minus one and one. And the best way to do it is, first of all, uh, I want them to be, instead of between zero and one, between minus 0 0.5 and a positive 0 0.5. So I'll just subtract 0 0.5. So now it will be a value between a minus 0 0.5 and a positive 0 0.5. Let's do it for both texture. And now you can see because we've subtracted a lot of like the value, it will be very small. So we just need to bring it back by multiplying it by two. Now we have the same distortion, but when we'll remove the offset or we'll change the offset, it will remain in place. Now let's add some color to the ring and it's really simple. I'll just create a uniform. It will be a vector three and let's call it tint and add the hint source color. And now if we'll go to parameters, you can see that we have a color that we can add and I'll just set color RGB to tint. And now the ring is colored. Now let's address the opacity or transparency of the ring. Now I want the ring to be a little bit transparent, but I also want the transparency to change based on the noise texture. So let's see how we can do that. First of all, let's create a uniform and it will be a float. We'll call it amount and I want it to have a range. So it will be between zero and one when zero is zero transparency and one is completely transparent. And now, first of all, let's just control the transparency in the most boring way possible. Color A will be equal to amount. Or in this case, if you want a, a one to be completely transparent, let's do one minus amount. And then if we'll go here to the parameter, you can see that on zero, it's completely opaque and on one it's completely transparent but it also removed everything we did so far so what i'm going to do is i'm going to multiply the existing value by this amount so if it will be one nothing will happen and if it will be zero or something smaller than one it will get more and more transparent so let's see how it looks yeah that's pretty standard and boring so let's make it a little bit more interesting. So I want to change the transparency based on the noise texture. The problem is that when we're dealing with transparency, you do need values between zero and one. You don't want negative numbers. And currently our noise texture is between minus one and one, and we don't want that. So let's just recalculate everything here and we'll just remove all of the adaptations we did before to make it negative and it will be between zero and one like it was before. And if we'll comment that out, we can see that that's how it looks like if you change the transparency based on the noise texture, which is pretty cool. And we already know that if we'll multiply it, it will keep the ring shape. And then, yeah, that's a cool shape. Now let's add back the amount. And now you can make it disappear 
And it is cool, it is cooler than before, but I think we can make it even cooler. So I want to try to create a more extreme noise effect. So to do that, first I'll just multiply the noise by, let's say, 6, and now we have something more extreme, but I want it to be inverted, that most of the ring will be transparent. So to invert it, I'll just take 1 and subtract the value. And now we have a subtracted ring where most of the ring is transparent and we have this cool effect, but now I can no longer see the ring. So I want to control it using the amount parameter. So I'll just multiply it by the amount parameter and I'll comment out this line just so we'll see exactly what's going on. So the bigger the amount parameter is, the bigger the effect will be as well. And I think that's a really cool effect. And now if we'll add this, we'll have complete transparency at the end. And I think it looks really good. Also, the natural state of the ring doesn't have to be zero. It can be, let's say, 0 0.3. And that already looks so much better. Another thing that I did is make a version that's only half a ring. So this half will be in front of the player and this half will be behind the player. And I think it looks pretty good. It's not complicated, I just think it's not that interesting. I created a mask, uh, like a gradient mask, and then I'm just taking the uh, alpha and I'm multiplying it by the mask. Now all that's left is the particle effect. So I'll take this texture and let's apply it to the particle emitter. And now we can already see it's way too big. So of course we'll change the scale. Let's say 0 0.04 to 0 0.1. Yeah, that's about it. I want to take care of the gravity because I don't like a lot of gravity, just a little bit. Now I want to make it ring shaped. So let's go to spawn, position and emission shape and let's set it to ring. And I already want, let's say, 2,000 particles. And now it will be very easy to set the size of the ring. First of all, we need the inner ring and then the outer one. And of course, we also want some proportions. So let's take the emission shape scale and multiply the y-axis by 3. And that's our ring shape. Now we can hide the original ring and let's make the particles explosive. So they will just appear together. And as we can see, it doesn't look really good. Of course, at the end it will be one shot, but for now I just want to see it in a loop. So let's make it look better. First of all, I want to add a little bit of velocity to it. So let's make the velocity point upwards. And let's say the maximum will be 100%. So it's really nice, but now the gravity really isn't enough. So let's add some gravity. Uh, we'll go to acceleration, gravity, and let's say 200. Yeah, that's cool, that's cool. Let's say maybe something like that. Yeah, I like it. Now, the problem is the particles are just disappearing immediately and they appear immediately. So let's go to scale and have a scale curve. And I want the scale curve to start from zero and then the particles will not appear out of thin air and they will get smaller the, the longer they go. Yeah, that looks pretty good. We can even like adjust it a little bit or do something like that. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. I like that. Let's do the same thing with the color. First of all, let's make it a, a similar color to the ring itself. And then let's add an alpha curve and let's make it a little bit transparent, right? I don't want the particles to be completely opaque. And as well, we can just make them disappear slowly. That looks pretty good. I think we can add some little touches with a radial velocity, especially negative one. That's really cool. And if we'll do it to the extreme, it looks like some kind of a black hole. Uh, but I think we'll just give it a little, a little touch. Uh, let's say minus 50 and 10. Yeah, even without 10, just a negative one looks really good. And we can do the same thing with orbital velocity. Now, if we'll go too extreme with it, it will look very funny, right? So what I want to do is to give it just a little touch, 0 0.05. That's cool. And let's say this will be a negative 0.05 and this will be something 
and like asymmetrical, let's say 0 0.01. So it will go a little bit to one side. I think that looks really cool. So this is how the effect that we've just made looks in the game itself. I think it looks really good and I think after some minor tweaks it might look even better. So that's the tutorial and I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions feel free to write them down in the comments and if you want to support this channel the best way to do so will be to wishlist Taito on Steam or just to share it with your friends. That would mean the world to me. Thank you guys so much and enjoy.